Hey everybody, Leanne Ely from SavingDinner.com and the Fly Lady, Marla Silly from FlyLady.net. And you yes. know what? Guess what month it is? It's menu planning month. It's yes. November, right? We've got to plan our menu so we can save money to buy those presents. Right, and we've got ways to help you do that. And as a matter of fact, one of our favorite appliances is sitting right here. It's like we having a love wife. You. I call it an indentured servant. I mean, love my love my crock potty does the most amazing things but I'm gonna tell you what there's a lot of people who are just afraid of their crock pots and we get letters they'll say gosh it just everything burned in there so let's talk about some of the problems that you can have and we're gonna do this is your official crock pot troubleshooting guide and we'll tell you exactly what to do so if you want some really hot tips get a paper <laughs> and oh, oh it's hot woo <laughs> go get a paper and pencil and take some notes first of all all crock pots, and by the way, that's a that's a patent from Rival. Trademark. Trademark. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Slow cooker. Slow cooker. Or we call it crock cooker. How do you like that? Yeah, that works. There you go. Anyway, all of these appliances are not created equal. And as a matter of fact, they started making them in the 70s, right? Yeah, when we were kids. We all just had like these nasty avocado green things. Well, back then, the heat was actually, now they determined as too low and unsafe. So they raised the temperature, and of course they don't tell you, you have to Google all over to find out, and the temperatures vary all over the board, depending on the year it was made, depending on the size it is, depending on the brand. And the wattage. It's true. So how your crock cooker cooks is all a matter of depend, depending on what it is that you have. So for one thing that I always say is even though my recipes we do as best we can, always saying your mileage may vary and, and you need to do you know certain different things, we always say take a look back on your appliances manual because it'll give you some hints. Yes, you did get an instruction manual and it is in a hot spot somewhere in a junk drawer. <laughs> and if you can't find it, you can always look it up online. She taught me that. <laughs> <laughs> she did. But for there's some some definite tips that everybody needs to have and we're going to start with what some of those are. First of all, if you have whatever your size of your of your um, crock pot is, it always needs to be three fourths filled so that it can cook evenly. You need to give it a little bit of a headroom. That's why the three so fourths. It can bubble. Right? Yeah, and you don't want this, you know, coming home and having this, you know, mess everywhere. You, so you need to give it a little bit of headroom. And if it's too low, it's gonna burn, right? It's gonna get too hot. That's right. So that's one of our hints is make sure regardless of the recipe that it's three quarters filled. So if you have a recipe and you look and go, gosh, mine's only half filled. Well, if it's something like with dried beans and you're doing some split peas or whatever, even if, yeah, even if you don't have any more split peas, put a few more other whatever dried beans and a little bit more liquid, add a few more vegetables and just bring the, the um, bring it up a little bit. The second thing that you need to know about the crock pot is that regardless of what recipe you're using, whether it's mine or whether it's something that they found on the internet yeah. or in a book, before you say, oh, what a great recipe, I'm gonna make that, put it in in the morning and come home that night and, and have it. My suggestion is that you always test it when you're home first because you just don't know. It could be a bummer recipe. It could, it could actually, um, you know, overflow. It could be, it could burn things. Unless it's something that you're really comfortable with and you've done something similar, make sure you test it first before you leave the house for the whole day. And don't blame your crock pot. That's right. The because crock pot's sweet and it, nice. It, it takes good care of us. It does. And I even like to take the crock pot recipes and do them in a Dutch oven, in the oven, occasionally. Yes, you when can. When I'm going to be home. You can do that. You can do that. And the other wonderful thing, and Marla actually taught me this, was you can do baked potatoes in it. Oh, yeah. During the summer. What a good idea that My is. My daughter-in-law taught me that. Well, high five, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> and here's another one. This is another Marla tip. At Thanksgiving, put your mashed potatoes in your crock pot and put it on low. Yes, it, it, it works wonders. Well, and then you don't have all that, you know, I mean, we're always missing stove space and oven space, right? Yeah, we're gonna talk about Thanksgiving later, but we have to talk about just how fabulous this crock pot is. What other helpful hints do you have for the crock pot? 
Well, I like a crock pot that I can take out of here yes. and brown meat on the stove. And right. I buy mine according to that. Yes. I have an all clad one that right. I gave I have you that. And, mm -hmm. and your daughter stole. That's right. And then, <laughs> and then I have another one that's a relatively inexpensive one, a Hamilton Beach, that you can put on the stove and do the same thing. And it has actually has a little griddle with it. So there are ones out uh, yes. there where you can brown your meat and do all that. But I learned something from you, and I don't really know what it's called, but if I don't like lumps of meat. Mm -hmm. So you've taught me how to poach meat. Oh yeah, with a little broth, right, or water, and so it cooks them. It divides the hamburger meat or whatever up, right, so that it's it's just all crumbly, tiny pieces, right. Yeah. That's nice. So yeah, so you, hey, you just, we teach each other. Yeah, yeah. that's we, what we do. We learn from each other. We've been learning from each other for over ten years now. So uh, more like thirteen, sister. Mm. Woo! Time flies when you're having fun. That's exact. I knew that was coming. So the other thing about the crock pot is there's a low setting and there is a high setting, and sometimes it is isn't just double it if it's going to be low. Sometimes it's completely inappropriate to use a low setting and it won't get hot enough or bubbly enough to, to really do something that you're, you're wanting to do. But again, that depends on your appliance. So check it before you do it, right? Well, with chicken and things like that, I like to pre-cook mm -hmm. my chicken before I put it in the crock pot. Unless I'm doing a whole roasted chicken and then it's in the crock pot right. by itself. But I like it. I like to make sure that I don't want chicken sushi. Ugh, chicken sushi. <laughs> we done that. We done that one time before. What? Right? That's what I was keynoting and, yes, and ended up yeah. sick and not keynoting. In the I was instead at the bathroom floor throwing up. But the other thing that I will tell you about um, the the crock pot when you're doing chicken, another great hint is even if you see a recipe, this is something that I've learned just in the last few years. So some of my older recipes will have um, chicken breasts going in here. Well, chicken thighs, boneless, skinless chicken thighs are I so much better. And they're tender and they're delicious in here. They don't dry out. You put a chicken breast in here and you've got chicken shreds, you know? But and chicken thighs, they're moist, mm -hmm. they're uniform, mm -hmm. and they're amazing. I they mean, are. And you can do so much stuff with them. You can take the boneless skinless mm -hmm. well I like the skin on that because it makes a great broth mm -hmm. but you can stuff those with ham and oh, all yeah, kinds you can of do wonderful it. Mm, stuff. That's so. yummy. And the other thing is remember that your crock pot is going to tenderize your food so if you have um, like for example a pork tenderloin don't put a pork tenderloin in here. Pork tenderloins are just very very lean uh, that's a lean meat also a tenderloin is very meat fillets different things like that. You want to have something that's a tough piece of meat, a brisket. You want a pot roast, anything. The long, slow cooking is what tenderizes it. So if you have something that is already um, a lean meat, like a tenderloin, yeah. that tenderloin is going to get tough as nails in there. And I've learned something else. Your, your inexpensive cut of meat is only as good as the gravy you put on it. Amen, sister. So you have to make this wonderful gravy to pour over it to cook with the onions and the carrots and, and it all will make potatoes. it right in there for and you. And if you taste the gravy and it doesn't taste good, mm -mm. you just might as well not even put it over the roast. That's right. So, so you make sure you make sure the gravy tastes good before right. you pour it over the and roast. We'll show you how to do that too. Yes. So, and the other thing, one last thing, one last hint. Um, sometimes people have a little tendency to get a little um, zealous, shall we say, with the salt. You need, you need to layer your salt. So start with a little bit of salt when you're doing your recipe. Come back later and when it's almost done, taste it. Add a little bit more salt then. Because if you put too much salt in there, it's just going to cook in and cook in and cook in and get really well, nasty and too acrid. Too salt makes the meat tough. It does, absolutely. So you have to watch that. And one of the things that you can do is if you have over salted, take a whole potato, just peel it and just throw it in and it'll absorb that salt. But it's also going to absorb a lot of your liquid, so sorry about that. So stews, meat, you can do meatloaf in here, you can bake potatoes, sweet potatoes, you can um, do, you could put a sauce or a, or a soup in here if you're having company. There's so many different uses for a crock pot. A crock pot is your best friend. Make sure you utilize it, plug it in in the morning. Don't forget to plug it in. That's a biggie. <laughs> That's a bad one. <laughs> anyway, there's your tips for crock pots. Ta-da!